welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through some of the best and worst art supply purchases that I've ever made. The very first thing I want to talk about is this Winsor & Newton brush. It is a pure squirrel mop brush. It's from Winsor & Newton so you would expect the quality to be pretty good but since I've had it, the barrel of it has become so small because hair just comes out of this brush. Every time I use it in a wash I'll get a hair on my page and I'll have to pull it out. Sometimes it can leave a mark on the page and then if you try and pick it out it just kind of messes up the painting. So yeah, I basically just never use this brush anymore. That brings me on to one of my best ever purchases, which is this Escoda Ultimo Synthetico Mop Brush. This is my all time favorite mop brush. It is a synthetic brush, which is interesting because you do hear that mop brushes are best when they're real animal hair, but this one just proves to me that you can have a synthetic mop brush and it's still great. It holds a lot, a lot of water and it's held its shape pretty well. Along with the Escoda brush, this is one of my most used brushes. I have this in the size 10, and I actually think this is the perfect size for sort of when you're in the middle of the painting and you're doing some detail work, but you still wanna do some washes. And I find that's most of the painting for me is that middle section. And I think it really pairs nicely with this mop brush. So if you're looking to start your watercolor brush collection and you're not really sure which ones to go for, I would definitely recommend these two to start off with. I've had this one for over two years now. I've never had a single hair fall out of it or with this one. So moving on to one of my worst purchases and this might surprise some of you because I have used it in quite a few videos and also I see a lot of people on YouTube using this palette. I got this one from Jackson. The brand is Magello. There are some parts of it that I do like. I like how many wells there are. And I also like how it has this removable palette. The main thing that I don't like is because it's plastic on the base, it just pushes itself around and it doesn't stay firm on the table. Another thing that I'm not, and this is just a personal preference, this isn't necessarily something wrong with the palette, but I don't like how these wells are not removable. In most of my other palettes I use the ones where you can have the removable pans and I like that because I'm always swapping out my colours on my palette and changing my mind on what I want to use. And with a palette like this, you basically are just stuck with what you've put in there. And so sticking on the theme of palettes, this little palette from Medine is one of my favourite palettes of all time. It's a little bit beaten up. <laughs> but it's still doing amazing. And I use this all the time. I've taken it out to so many different places. I've taken it on holiday with me. I've taken it traveling all around. Whenever I go on urban sketching, I take it with me. And even though it's very small, it can fit so many different colors in it. So I just think that that's amazing to be able to fit that many colors into such a tiny little space. I got one of these little clips from Daiso. It's got a magnet on it and it's a clip. So I can attach it like this and what you can do is if you attach the clip to your sketchbook you can actually have the palette floating above your sketchbook and it almost looks like a weird magic trick the one thing that i use all the time is this schminker gouache and i bought this quite a long time ago and i use it all the time but somehow i still have quite a lot of it left I think it's because with gouache you, you don't actually need that much and when I'm just using it at the end of a watercolour painting I only need like a really tiny bit. It's really opaque and it just does everything you want it to do really. One other product which I get asked about a lot is this Uni Posca pen. Definitely one of my best purchases and I think I've bought it about three or four times now. It's a Uni Posca paint pen and I have it in the 0.7 millimeter tip and this is basically almost like a pen version of gouache paint that's how I kind of think of it even though I think it's actually acrylic paint but I use it how I would use a gouache paint at the end if I want to get a little bit more detail also if I'm being lazy and I just want to do some really really quick highlights at the end this is perfect for that it's completely opaque and it just goes over the top of watercolor really nicely especially if you've got quite dark watercolor just adding this over the top, just right at the end. We're gonna go on to the subject of sketchbooks. So for the worst one, this is actually the very first sketchbook that I ever bought. 
I went into an art store in Sydney and I just really wanted to get a watercolour sketchbook but this was the only one they had in stock and I've heard some people say good things about it. It's the Kunst and Papier, Papier watercolour sketchbook. And at the time when I first bought it, it was the first watercolour sketchbook I'd bought. So I didn't really have much to compare it to. And it was quite expensive. I think it was something around 50 Australian dollars, which is quite expensive for a watercolour sketchbook. It looks really nice. The cover is like a fabric cover. But now thinking about it, the quality of the paper is pretty terrible. I don't know if you can see how dappled that paper is. And you can also just see there how warped the paper is. It's 35% cotton, which now that I know a bit more about watercolour sketchbook, that explains quite a lot as to why the paper is buckling so much. At the same time, I've had sketchbooks that aren't 100% cotton and they haven't buckled as much as this. I definitely regret buying this, but on the other hand, it was my very, very first watercolour sketchbook, so it is fun to look through at some of my old sketches that I did in here. Finally, let's get on to my very best sketchbook purchase of all time, and that is the Etcher Lab sketchbooks. I have tried these in three different sizes. And my favourite size is the B5 portrait size. I like this size because you can go across the page, but then you can also do portrait. So you can kind of do portrait and landscape, which I like. It's also small enough that it is pretty portable. These sketchbooks are 100% cotton, which as I was saying, is very important for watercolour sketchbooks. The other thing you can do is you can actually paint the covers. So this is the landscape version and I have painted the cover of this. I don't know if it really worked very well. It kind of looks like a weird denim sketchbook now. I do like this one. I have taken this out a lot, urban sketching. The only thing I would say is with the landscape format is it's quite big. If you compare the width of that to that. I also have it in a mini version, which I've been enjoying. Whenever I go out, I can bring this with me. It weighs nothing and it's just very easy to take out. The paper is incredible. As I said, it's 100% cotton. Look how straight that paper is. No buckling at all. I've also in the past used the Perfect Sketchbook, which is also from Etcher. This is even thicker paper than these ones. And I, I would say that, yeah, these are great. Obviously it's even better quality paper than these ones, but I think for the price, I don't actually think there's that much point in upgrading to this one, unless you just prefer this cover which does feel quite nice. If you have a different best or worst, I would like to hear it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.